Hey guys, it's Nurse Mike here with SimpleNursing.com. Today we're covering pharmacokinetics. Basically, how medications move through the body and what nurses need to know. So for all my Simple Nursing members, be sure to grab this pharmacology study guide inside the membership area. And let's break it down step by step. Pharmacokinetics is what happens to medications after it enters the body. So we use the memory trick, add me, like on Facebook. So if you haven't added me yet, well, please do. But in this case, add me stands for A, absorption, how medications are absorbed in the body. D is for distribution, how medications get to where they're going in the body. M is for metabolism, basically how the medication is processed within the body. And E is for elimination, how the med gets out of the body and into the body. So now getting into the specifics, starting with A for absorption. This is location of administration. Now we've all probably taken Tylenol or aspirin orally for a headache, right? But there are many other ways to get medication into the body in the hospital setting. We often use injection, or what's known as parenteral. This means the injection route. So whether IV, intravenous, which is the quickest, for example, IV antibiotics, pain meds, or really anything. Or IM, intramuscular, this goes into the muscles, like what we do with vaccines. Or SQ, subcutaneous, this goes into the fat area, for example, when administering insulin. Or, as mentioned before, orally. This is what's known as enteral. This means in the GI tract. So PO means per oral, for example, Tylenol. Or SL, sublingual, under the tongue. For example, when giving nitroglycerin, for anyone with chest pain or a heart attack. We also have rectal, or what's known as PR, per rectal suppository. For example, rectal Tylenol. And even the lungs, inhaled medication like albuterol for asthmatic patients, and steroids, for anyone with lung disease like COPD, or like asthma, as mentioned before. And lastly is transdermal. This is absorbed from skin, so skin absorption. And an example here is a patch, like nitroglycerin, or a nicotine patch, or even a fentanyl patch, which is used for pain. Next is D for distribution. This is the way the body gets medication throughout the body, via the bloodstream, basically the highways of the body. So let's say you're giving an IV antibiotic into the client's vein. It's going to go directly into the bloodstream, and then go all over the body. Because remember, wherever blood goes, that's where the medication goes. So blood goes to the kidneys, brain, and all over the body. Well, the medication's gonna go there too. So the key point is that certain medications are absorbed by specific binding sites, or what's known as site binding. For example, pain medications have opioid binding sites to block pain, but it also blocks vital signs too. So with opioids, we see low and slow heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. That's why we say opioids make the vitals low and slow. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX Review Lecture Series and live cram sessions, led by myself and industry experts. Now, M is for metabolism. How the body converts the medication into a less or more active form. These forms are known as metabolites. So the big key point is that the liver is primarily responsible here. First pass phenomenon is a key term that you should know. It's primarily with PO medications. Whatever you take in the mouth gets dumped into the stomach, then sucked into the small intestine, and then right into the liver. So the liver is like a border patrol agent to stop any medication before it gets pushed to the rest of the body. This is what is meant by first pass phenomenon because medications must first pass through the liver when taken PO, or orally. Now, to a much lesser degree, lungs, kidneys, and intestines also help with metabolism. Now, since most enzymatic reactions take place in the liver, well, then chronic liver disease like cirrhosis or even hepatitis, where there's scarring in the liver, typically result in less metabolism of the drug. Now, it's also important to know that at birth, metabolic enzyme systems are not fully developed. So newborns usually have a great difficulty metabolizing certain medications. 
And on the flip side, as we age, the enzymatic activity decreases with age. So elderly clients can't metabolize medication quite as well, resulting in higher levels of the medication and toxicity. Now moving on to E for excretion. This is eliminating medications through the filters of the body. So out of the body and into the potty. The number one organ responsible for this is the kidneys. They take on the majority of this role to get medications out of the body via urination. Elderly clients lose about 3% of kidney function per year. And in their mid-60s, they have a higher risk for toxicity as they age. And also clients with kidney disease or kidney failure, aka renal failure, where the kidneys start breaking down. These clients will typically have higher rates of toxicity with higher levels of toxic medications just sitting in their body, kind of like a dirty pool that needs to be drained. They must wait for dialysis to wash the blood. So that's why an important key term that you should write down is half-life. Basically how long it takes for half of the medication in the blood to be excreted or eliminated by the body. We're just trying to figure out how long is this toxic medication going to stay in the body so that we know when to give the next dose to maintain that therapeutic level or when to hold the drug so we don't overdose the client into toxicity. And that's why half-life is so important. And they're gonna quiz you a lot on this because you can seriously harm a patient if you give too much and the patient goes into an overdose, that toxic effect. Or if you give too little and underdose the client, then they may not have the benefits from the medication. Now the next key term is nephrotoxicity. Certain medications can harm the kidneys. So nephro means kidneys and toxicity just means toxicity. For example, antibiotics like gentamicin can be really harmful to the kidneys. And lastly, other ways to eliminate from the body. We have bowel and exocrine glands, but these are a lesser degree than the kidneys that take on the majority of the workload. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.